Hello everyone, I am Suham Gatkil. I am a second year master's student at Stanford and today I will be talking about spatiotemporal graph convolution for resting state functional MRI analysis. So the resting state functional MRI is a 4D bull signal which records the temporal dynamics of intrinsic functional brain networks. Prediction from this bold signal, such as gender, age, and control or disease, can help in characterizing brain disorders which often impact the functional networks of the brain. There have been some existing deep learning methods which have tried to accomplish this task. The first one involves a graph convolution, however, it loses temporal information since it does not consider the 4D nature of the bold signal. The second one is a 4D convolution in voxel space, however, since this does not consider a graph structure, it ignores the functional connection of distant regions, which might be important for prediction. We propose a spatiotemporal graph convolution network, or STGCN, which considers both the temporal dependency and the functional connectivity of the brain networks as obtained from the Volt signal of the functional MRI scan. In order to consider these functional brain networks as spatiotemporal graphs, we consider a set of nodes V defined across n regions of interest of the brain and t time points where t is the length of the bold signal. The spatial graph is constructed by considering each ROI to be a node in the graph connected with edges and the weight of these edges is the functional affinity between the ROIs. The functional affinity is the magnitude of correlation between the concatenated time series across all subjects. In order to construct the temporal graph, the spatial graph is copied across time and the nodes of the same ROI are connected across the time points. Doing this, we get a spatial plus temporal graph as shown in the bottom right figure. The STGCN operation consists of a spatial convolution followed by a temporal graph convolution. We start off with a set of input features F sub D. This is followed by a standard graph convolution with a spatial graph convolution kernel W sub SG. The features obtained from here are fed into a temporal convolution, which is a standard 1D convolution with a temporal graph convolution kernel W sub TG. This allows us to get our output features, which are then further used for the prediction task. The complete STGCN model consists of feeding the input features to three of these STGC blocks, and each STGC block consists of a spatial graph convolution with 64 output channels, followed by a temporal graph convolution again with 64 output channels. The output of the last STGC block is then fed into a global average pooling layer, followed by a fully connected layer with sigmoid activation to give the final class probabilities. We do not train the STGCN model on the full length of the MRI scan. This is because patterns of the intrinsic function connectivity are not stationary across the length of the pole signal. As a result, we train on subsequences of a fixed window sized tree prime which is obtained through experimentation. This helps us in increasing the number of training samples and also capturing this dynamic function connectivity. Once we have predictions from each of these subsequences, a simple voting mechanism is used in order to obtain the final prediction for the task. In addition to the prediction, the model also learns an edge importance matrix which quantifies how important is each graph edge to the prediction. This edge importance matrix allows us to highlight important functional connections in the brain for prediction. The model learns a positive and symmetric edge importance matrix M, which is an n by n square matrix representing the different regions of interest of the brain. In order to introduce this matrix into the STGCN model, we added to the graph convolution step with a learnable mask. The diagonal entries of M quantify how important is each ROI for the prediction or the self-importance, while off-diagonal entries help us in identifying the importance of each function connection to the prediction. This matrix is shared across all STGC layers to make it more interpretable and standardized. Moving on to the datasets used, we use two datasets for the prediction task. The first one is the NCAN dataset or the National Consortium on Alcohol and Neurodevelopment in Adolescents. All the analysis tasks for this dataset was performed by my co-author Chin Yu Zhao. This dataset consists of 773 adolescents, almost equally divided between males and females. The bold signal values are normalized to z-scores. And since we saw that the hyperparameter or the window size T prime was important for the prediction accuracy, we varied the window size and perform five-fold cross-validation in order to get the optimal value. The number of subsequences used for the voting mechanism is S equals 64. Additionally, the number of brain regions is 34 ROIs and the length of the bold signal is T equal to 269 frames with a TR of two seconds. 
Looking at the results of the end candidate dataset, we first show the results of our baselines. The first baseline was a multi-layer perceptron, which was a simple neural network applied to the upper triangular correlation matrix as an input. This performed the worst among all methods. The second one was an LSCM applied to the entire bold signal matrix. This consisted of a recurrent cell with a 256 dimensional hidden state. The third one consisted of a spatial graph convolution to obtain intermediate features, which were then fed into an LSTM. Our method, STGCN, performed better than all these baselines and the prediction accuracy for sex was 79.8% with an optimal window size or T prime of 32. And the prediction accuracy for age was 77.7% .7 with an optimal window size or T prime equal to 24. Moving on to the results obtained from the edge importance matrix, which presents the functional dynamics of the brain. We first look at the ROI importance or how important is each self connection to the prediction task. For sex, the most important region of the brain was the inferior temporal lobe. Correspondingly, for age, the most important regions were the pars opercularis and supermarginal gyrus regions. Moving on to the edge importance, or how important is each edge to the prediction task? Functional connections between ROIs with importance higher than 0.3 are shown by the ROIs having the same color. For sex prediction, the most important edge was the frontal posterior cingulate or PCC connection. Correspondingly, for age, it was the inferior temporo parieto frontal network connection. This task of mapping the values from the edge importance matrix onto the brain regions was done by my co-author Chin Yu Zhao for both the NCANDAR dataset and the HCP dataset. The second dataset used was HCP or the Human Connect Com project. This project distributes public research data for different studies that focus on connections within the human brain. This dataset was only used for sex prediction since the age range was quite small between 22 and 35. Again, the bold signal values were normalized to z-scores and the number of subsequences which are used for the voting procedure was s, s equals 64. Additionally, the number of brain regions was n equal to 22 ROI and the length of the bold signal was t equal to 269 frames with a TR of 2 seconds. Looking at the results of the HCP dataset in terms of the prediction scores, first are the existing methods by Weiss et al. and Smith et al. Weiss et al. used a support vector machine with RBF kernel, while Smith et al. used correlation coefficients as input features similar to MLP. The next is the multi-layer perceptron baseline, followed by an LSTM baseline, followed by the GC or graph con convolution plus the LSTM baseline, and finally our method STGCN. STGCN performed the best again with the highest accuracy of 83.7% obtained at an optimal window size of t prime equal to 128. An interesting thing to note is that similar optimal accuracy scores were obtained for a window size range of 64 to 128. This is highly correlated to the window size obtained from the NCANDA dataset. Even though there are, there are distinct imaging protocols, different number of ROIs and difference in the length of the bold signals between the two datasets. Looking at the results of the edge importance matrix for the HCP dataset, for the ROI importance, it was seen that the differences for the sex were mainly located in the visual cortex. Also, regions with significant sexual differences were spatially more concentrated compared to the adolescent dataset of NCANDA. In conclusion, we introduced a new framework for analyzing resting state functional MRI scans based on spatiotemporal graph convolution networks. These networks consider both the spatial and temporal aspects of the 4D bold signal which is required for prediction tasks. Secondly, instead of considering the entire length of the bold signal, we considered only short sequences of the bold time series and proved that the STGCN can accurately predict age and gender of study participants using these short sequences. Finally, the window size of the subsequence obtained from the bold signal plays a key role in the gender and age prediction. Thank you and feel free to reach out for any questions that you might have.